right, welcome back guys. Today we're gonna to be doing a quick video. This is actually viewer requested. Um, this is just gonna be a helmet update. Um, y'all wanted to see, let me get a little bit banger, better angle. So y'all wanted to see an update on my helmet and kind of how I set it up. Now this may not look super, you know, high speed or whatever um, to you, but uh, this mesh coating on the outside here does really um, help this helmet blend uh, in the woods. Um, if you haven't seen my camo, your gear video, I, I put it out a couple weeks ago, go watch that. Uh, this netting is fantastic. It's good for uh, like your backpack. Um, I guess in theory you could make some type of clothing cover out of it, I guess, but it's good for covering like your stuff, like a tent or, you know, things like that. Um, but I put some of this on my helmet and it works really well. Um, it pretty much makes your helmet disappear and you wouldn't think that your helmet would be visible because I spray painted this. I don't know if you can see under there, but there is like a, a camo pattern. Well, assuming this will actually stay. So there is like a camo pattern underneath here. All right, I went ahead and cut off the uh, mesh here, just so you can see what it looks like, because I know most of you are not gonna care about the mesh, but you wanna see what the helmet itself looks like. And this is what the helmet itself looks like. So as you can see, uh, it's been spray painted, a uh, different camo pattern. And also this will show you kind of the different things that I have on here. And uh, the th different adjustments, you know, I've made to it. So let me move this out of the way. So as you can see on here, there's my camo pattern that I spray painted on here. But again, if you look at this, just how smooth it is and how much everything sticks out, like it's kind of going to stand out in the woods. Now, if you're in an urban environment, you know, that wouldn't really matter as much. Um, but let me kind of show you all the stuff that's on here that you may not have been able to see underneath the net. I don't know where I'll put this in the video, but it'll be somewhere in here. So... But anyway, so you can see under here, this is just a piece of Velcro that I stole off of actually like a radio pouch, I think. I just cut it off and then repurposed it. Um, but it just Velcro's on here. Now that's not gonna, you know, save the night vision if someone's like trying to yank it off your head, but it'll let you know it's trying to disappear. So that's what it's on there for, because again, these uh, J arms are very easy to knock off if you hit this little lever. So highly suggest using some sort of uh, cord. And this is bungee cord. One thing this also helps do is stabilize uh, the mount so it doesn't shake or wobble as much because it has tension here. Kind of similar to what these little bungees here do. So you can see that on there. There is the Nightcore um, IR little strobe. And again, this is mostly for um, just identification. So, you know, people who I'm running around with can see me if I want them to. Also, it's a really good just safety feature for on the range. If you go to like a, a night vision class or, you know, a low light class or something like that, where you're outside, you want something to let people know where you're at so you don't accidentally get shot. And on the other side, this is something I haven't decided if I like yet or not completely. Um, at some point I might change it up, but as you can see, I have the um, enforced light on here, but I have it mounted and I'll just go ahead and show you kind of what this is. So one, I have it tethered to this over here. Uh, no, it's not going to stay put, but it's going to make it to where if it falls off, I'll know because it'll start dangling and making noise. Um, so on here, you can see it just mounts the pick rail. So that's what would happen if it fell off. So here is just a section of Molly, or not Molly. Well, it's a Molly attachable Picatinny rail, if that makes sense. I found this on Amazon and I couldn't figure out how to attach this to my helmet cheaply. I know they make a mount that attaches to uh, these arc rail adapters and it like makes it stick out, but then it's at like a 45 degree angle over here. And I didn't like that because it stuck out really, really far, especially for a light this big. So, and because I'm not buying a new light, uh, I just want to see what I can make work. So what I did is I attached Velcro and just kind of made my own Velcro. And I used the, uh, the hook side and just kind of looped it through and stuck it to itself. Then I just kind of stuck it down as best I could. There's also loop or the hook Velcro on the back side of this um, to where it's actually, you know, kind of sticking on there as well. So there's enough Velcro on there where I don't think it's really going to go anywhere. Now, I would prefer it obviously to be a little bit more um, secure than that. Um, but again, if I lose this light, I don't really care. It's not that fantastic of a light anyways. And if it disappears, whatever, I'll get another one. Um, but that's kind of how I had that set up. Again, feel free to test around your stuff or test around. That doesn't make sense. Feel free to... Uh, MacGyver your equipment because you'll figure out what works best for you and um, what works best for you may not be best for someone else. So as you can see, tightened, it has just enough slack. It's still tight enough where it's got a little bit more bungee if I wanted to, but that kind of holds stuff steady as you can see. Again, I went over the Velcro for this. 
as you can see, I like Velcro. It's useful for a lot of different occasions. So hopefully, again, this is useful. Um, if you have any questions about this, again, just uh, comment down below and I will answer everybody's questions. So obviously that spray paint pattern does help the, ha the uh, helmet stay. You can see it kind of on the flashlight here. You can see it does help it blend in better. Um, but it's still kind of reflective and it's still smooth and there's really not a whole lot of smooth round things, you know, in nature, especially out in the woods. It's rare when you get rocks that, you know, have a sheen like that. So it still stands out even spray painted. So this mesh really helps it blend in. If you go out in the woods and you lay in the prone position, this basically just looks like dirt. So that's why I did that. The ear pro I have on here, for those who wonder... I'll hold it up close. So these are the Peltor range guards. I didn't bother spray painting these. This gray pretty much blends in with most stuff. Gray is a pretty good neutral color that kind of blends in everywhere. So I left that on there. These are the Peltor, the 3M Peltor uh, arc rail adapters. Don't buy the cheap ones off Amazon. They don't work as well. They don't click as positively in place. These, as you can tell, are very, very solid whenever you click them in. And also they have this nice little cut right here and right here so whenever your stock is less in the way or your ear pro is less in the way of your stock whenever you shoulder it and this allows it to kind of go up underneath the helmet and not bump so it actually gets closer to your ear and uh, side benefit these if you use these as part of your comms if you plug it in because they have a plug-in um, on the other side uh, that you can plug in um, like a like a microphone or you know uh, audio whatever you want for like a, a radio um, these are actually, I don't know if they're technically shielded, um, but they function very well um, when it comes to using like high powered radios. Normally you get interference with cheaper headgear that's not shielded from that stuff. These, however they're built, it blocks out the majority of it. So you really don't hear anything. So I would, I would assume they're shielded, but don't quote me on that, but they do work very well. Um, if you've ever used a uh, higher power radios with ear pro, you know what I'm talking about. You get that squeal whenever you try to transmit. So with these, you don't get that squeal. So that's why I love put these on here. The uh, hearing safety rating is not as good, um, but that's neither here nor there. I don't really care. I'm going to wear plugs underneath them. And really I'm not as worried about my, my hearing. Um, you know, if I actually have to use this helmet. So there's that. I have the Enforce light on here. As you can tell, this is the Enforce uh, Weapon Mountains light. I forgot what the what it's called, but it has white light and IR. And you can tell the switch for it is under here. So you flip that switch, pull this out. Now it's in white light. Turn it on. Flip it the other direction. It has this little safety here too, if you want to use that to keep yourself from accidentally hitting it. And now it's in IR mode. Um, with Gen 3 night vision, you really don't need this unless you're indoors. But this makes for a good white light, you know, kind of helmet mounted light for looking around inside structures. And the IR is pretty good. So if you're in complete darkness, it lights up fairly well. And as you know, Gen 3 still requires light in order to work. So if you're in a completely dark environment, you're going to need that illumination. And the illumination on PBS 14 is more or less for up close stuff like reading maps. It's not for... Uh, you know, room clearing or anything like that. So you're going to want something on your helmet or I guess on your gun if you wanted to and just kind of use the uh, spill from that. But that's what I have on this side. Um, on top, I have, this is a Nightcore um, IR and visible strobe. So it has multiple modes. It has constant on of IR and green light. And then it has um, blinking or strobing of IR and green light. So that's on top for identification. That's all I have on this side. Again, same thing over here. Here's that plug for uh, your comms if you decide to use that. Next, let's go to the back end. The inside is still the same. It's a long fry ballistic helmet. I did modify, as you can see around here, there's a rubber band. I just kind of wrapped around uh, this to make it where it's actually tighter now so it actually holds. Um, it's not loose like it was initially. On the back, see if I can mount this up here, then I'll go over the night vision. So on the back, as you can see, this is just a knockoff of, I want to say OpsCore makes with this. I, I don't remember, but this one is actually just some Chinese knockoff, um, but it's just a battery compartment or a counterweight. It comes with a bunch of lead weights that come back here. I took all those out. And as you can tell, it unscrews from these two uh, screws back here. And then you mount it back, you know, take screws out, attach this, put it back in. It also Velcros, this little back strip of Velcro. Um, all I did was use it to hide my cables. Hold on. So all I did was use it to hide my cables. There we go. And also I put a whole bunch of lithium AA batteries and a couple CR123s back there. So with my older night vision, the sight marks, um, the Gen 1s, these are lighter than PVS-14. PVS-14 isn't that much heavier. 
I would say it's maybe a third heavier, something like that. It's it's you can tell it's heavier, but it's not noticeable. Um, but this is enough weight back here for that. And as you can tell, my little net just kind of half covers it, half doesn't. It may not look you know sexy or everything, but it it functionally works fine. I mean, it kind of breaks up the pattern of your helmet. Again, think of like the Israeli giant, I don't know what they call that thing, it's like a big hood that goes around their helmet to just make it not look like a human head. And part of camouflage is to make you not recognize what you're looking at, not necessarily to blend in. All right, and again, if you're looking for a good deal for a PVS-14, or really any night vision in general, uh, go ahead and check out Night Vision Guys. I would highly suggest their website. Out of all the websites I search for, and I looked for some night vision for a good six months that I was actively looking for good deals, kind of get prices, um, estimations. And then for about two months, I was looking to actually buy. And they by far had the cheapest prices I could come across. And especially for the specs. Now you can find, you know, cheaper night vision out here, but I'll leave a link to these um, to where I got them in the specific set that I got. But the, uh, the specs on these for the price are fantastic. I think it's like 30 3,000, 3,100, something like that for the spec tubes. Um, whereas everyone else that I could find them for, they were around $4,000. So again, for the price, um, I highly suggest night vision guys. And this is where I purchased those. So um, shout out to them. Now on here is a Narotos 2 Rhino mount. There's just a surplus one that I spray painted. I think it has somewhere on here, there's like all the original writing. I didn't bother with that. Um, one of the reasons why you also, in case you're wondering, I uh, want to tether this is whenever you're using the rhino mount and making it go up and down it's really easy to accidentally grab this um, i just did it off camera here a second ago and my night vision tumbled to the ground so having them on a tether is important so the naruto's mount for me has just the right amount of movement and adjustment i didn't need to adjust it any further i didn't need to buy anything special or fancy um, on the pbs 14 i would suggest you leave on the little rubber eye cup that comes with it if you can so when we were out shooting it was around it was in the 40s high 40s maybe so it was cold but not freezing but it was a cold enough or a large enough temperature change um, between my face and outside to where the cup and this lens on the inside would just keep fogging up and there wasn't you know enough airflow for it to unfog itself the front lens never fogged up but the, fat, the back one did because of that eye cup um, so I had to take it off so in winter pro tip take off the eye cup now that's gonna make your eye glow because again, there's light coming through here that's gonna reflect off your face. So you're not gonna be as stealthy. Um, if someone else has NVGs, they're probably gonna see that glow if they're close enough to you. Um, but it's either that or don't see out of them. I mean, you might be able to put like an anti-fog, you know, coating on there. I don't know. I'm not gonna mess with them because it's not that big of a deal to me. Now, one of the other things I did is on here, you'll notice on the front, see if I can get this where you can see it better. So on the front, there's this little cap. Notice on the front, I just put a piece of Velcro and I put a piece of Velcro right here. So this is tethered. So whenever you pop it off, instead of it just dangling there, um, all I do is just Velcro it to itself. And then that fixes um, the, the solution of it being out of the way. Now I've heard and seen that you can put a couple pieces of electrical tape around uh, the objective lens here. I think it's the objective lens, whichever lens, the front lens. And you can put a like a flip up scope cap um, for like just a rifle scope over there. And then whenever you know you wanna use it, you pop open the cap and then you put it back down whenever you don't wanna use it. So I bought one, we'll see if that works. If it does, I'll let you know. And one last thing, the J-arm uh, that I have on here, which is this piece right here, is the J-arm that came with the PBS-14. Um, the Skull Crusher cap that comes with it, I don't see myself ever using, you could if you want but this J arm is nicer than the surplus one I had uh, for this, which is laying around here somewhere. But anyways, if y'all have any questions, again, I just want to give you kind of a general update to my helmet because one of y'all asked for it. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. Again, this is a long fry ballistic helmet from Botac. Um, I highly suggest uh, buying one of these if you are in the market for a ballistic helmet, but you can't afford, you know, like an ops core or something like that. Even a hard hat veterans, I think are $600 now. These are 200 bucks. So again, if you're looking for a cheap, um, just kind of helmet setup, again, this part is by far the most expensive part, but the rest of this helmet is, you know, fairly inexpensive as long as you're looking around for, uh, you know, decent prices. And I do have a video where I shot this helmet and it worked just fine. Thank you, Rhett, for your sacrifice. He sacrificed his helmet for that video. But anyways, hopefully you all appreciate this video. If you have any more video ideas, uh, they're relatively easy to do that I have this stuff for already, I'd be more than happy to do the video. But anyways, hopefully you all have a good one.